in the last lecture we have seen the relation between power spectrum and autocorrelation function and we have proved that if x of t is wide sense stationary at least wide sense stationary then the autocorrelation function can be completely recovered from with the knowledge of power spectrum and if at all the random process is non stationary then only time average of autocorrelation function is recoverable that is what we have seen in both the equations this class we are going to see what uh, cross power spectrum density is and uh, we are going to see a few of its properties followed by the relation between cross power density spectrum as well as cross correlation the cross power spectrum density power density spectrum is given uh, is uh, obtained from uh, taking the power spectrum of uh, both x of t and y of t added together let us consider a random process w of t as a sum of two random processes x of t plus y of t and we are strictly considering that w of t is real in nature right now let us go forward with finding the autocorrelation function of w of t because we very well know that autocorrelation function as well as uh, power spectral density are fourier transform pair and exploiting that um, uh, theorem that we have proved earlier we're going to go forward and find the relation between cross power density spectrum and cross correlation right so finding the autocorrelation function of w of t r w w of t comma t plus tau this is what we have done when we tried to work with two random variables in unit 3 this is going to be expectation of w of t times w of t plus tau and we very well know that w of t is sum of x of t and y of t so we're going to straight away write that as x of t plus y of t times x of t plus tau times sorry I have a plus here plus y of t plus tau. This is how we're going to have our expression. And then by sum of products, what we're going to have is, we're going to have the final value as rxx of t comma t plus tau, which is obtained from expectation of x of t times x of t plus tau the first product is going to lead us to rxx of t comma t plus tau plus obviously these two are going to give us plus r y y of t t comma t plus tau these are the autocorrelation products that we're going to get by multiplying uh, x of t plus y of t with x of t plus tau plus y of t plus tau and you have two cross products that will be coming up when you multiply y of t with x of t plus tau and x of t with y of t plus tau you will be having two products that will come up so this is with x y so the next product that we will be getting is r x y of t comma t plus tau plus r y x of t comma t plus tau. So we very well know that r x y and r y x are two different entities. 
And now um, we have never claimed that, that uh, W of T or X of T plus and Y of T are white and stationary processes. So we, would, we are going to apply Fourier transform to the time averages on either sides of the autocorrelation function of W of T. Right. So when we apply the time average on the left hand side and then take its Fourier transform. Right. What we're going to quickly do is we're going to apply time averages on either sides. Right. This is what we're going to do. And then we'd be taking the Fourier transform. So technically, when you take Fourier transform for this one, what you're going to get is it is. The power spectral density of W. That is what we are going to attain. Likewise, we'd be getting products for the right hand side as well. So when we are taking the Fourier transform, let me just write it down for clarity. Taking time averages on either sides of equation A, let us label it as equation A and applying Fourier transform. Fourier transform. What we'd be getting is S W W of omega is equal to, we'd be taking Fourier transform of time average of R X X of T comma T plus tau, which would be S X X of omega plus S Y Y of omega plus, so we literally cannot say what the Fourier transform of R X Y of T comma T plus tau is going to be because we haven't had any proof or any theorems related to that so this would be this would be retained as it is it would be Fourier transform of let us consider f as Fourier transform so time average of r x y of t comma t plus tau right plus Fourier transform of time average of r y x of T comma T plus tau. We haven't proved that cross power spectral density and cross correlation are Fourier transform pair. So we'd be just leaving it there. Right. And then we'll go forward with finding the cross power density spectrum just as we have found the power density spectrum for the same for a random process X of T. Right. So let us go forward with finding the cross power density spectrum. So as we have assumed initially when we were doing the power density spectrum, uh, we had taken for a single random process X of T then, here we'd be going forward with for two real random processes. We are ensuring that X of T and Y of T are real in nature. Okay. For two real random processes, we basically define X T of T as a portion of sample space X of T over minus T to T Otherwise, it's going to be zero. This is the same thing that we have done for a single random process when we were trying to get the, get the expression for uh, power density spectrum. And the next one, obviously, it is going to be the definition, the sample function yt of t for which we'd be taking just a portion. We're just taking a portion of the sample function. I hope all of you remember how we have seen that uh, we cannot have a voltage density spectrum and hence we go forward with the 
power density spectrum that we have seen in the earlier lectures. Okay, and we are assuming that both xt of t and yt of t are, are bounded. Are bounded because um, for, we need to apply Fourier transform to this and for us to for xt of t and yt of t to be Fourier transformable, they have to abide to the Dirichlet condition and hence we are assuming that xt of t and yt of t are bounded in nature, okay? We are bounded to obey Dirichlet condition, Dirichlet condition. Okay, why does it need to obey Dirichlet condition for it to be Fourier transformable? That is the basic reason. And once we do the Fourier transform, we'd be, uh, with the help of Parseval's theorem, we'd be finding the energy and subsequently the power, the power dense, uh, the power average power of the signal from which we will be attaining the cross power density. Okay, this is what we have done earlier. It is uh, just reiterating what we have done earlier, but with x of t and y of t with two random processes now. Okay, so now we'll again, now that we have assumed x t of t, <clears throat> now that we have ensured that they are bounded, we can directly write x t of t has the Fourier transform, the sample, the portion of the sample function of the random process x t of t has the Fourier transform x t of omega and this has y t of omega has its random process and now we define the cross power. We never had cross power earlier but now we had p x x earlier and we had a single random process. Now that we have two random processes we are going to find out the cross power and especially within the interval minus t to t and then we are going to extend that concept from we're going to apply the limit t goes to infinity in order to ensure that the entire sample function is covered and then we go forward with the statistical mean to ensure that all the sample functions in the random processes contribute to the cross power, right? I hope you remember it from the previous lectures that we have dealt in the class. Right now, how are we going to define the cross power? The x, y, x, t is the expression that we have given to it. It is 1 by 2 times t into k minus t to t, x t of t, and then y t of t dt. Earlier it was absolute value of x t, x, I'm sorry, x square of t dt in the time domain. And because we are precisely writing it in the region minus t to t, we can directly write x t of t as x of t and y t of t as y of t. We have already defined here. So we could actually replace x t of t with y of t and y t of t with y of t. Okay. And again, going forward, because we know that x of t and y of t are Fourier transformable, the Parseval's theorem that of energy that we have seen can be applied here. And we can write e x y of t as I think we can directly write the power because we have already seen this expression for uh, the power density spectrum. We can directly go to the power and then express it rather than redoing everything again. So I'd be writing p x y of t as 1 by 2 times t, integral minus t to t, x of t, y of t, dt in the time domain. This is the average power in the time domain. And its counterpart in the frequency domain is going to be 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity because it's x t and y t, one of it will be a conjugate and the other one is directly written.
right? This is our average power that we have got. And we all very well know that uh, the cross power, this is the cross power that we have obtained in one of the sample functions of the random processes x of t and y of t. And for it to be applicable to all the sample functions or all the ensemble members in the entire random process, we'd be taking um, the expected value, the expected value. So going forward, we are going to have P X Y of T. I'm going to use the same expression actually, or um, I can write it as P X Y, and and then I can apply limit t tends to infinity. I can write it as P X Y is equal to, and take the limit going all the way to infinity. This covers the entire sample function, and one by two t integral. Minus t to t. It is expectation in the time domain. This is going to be expectation of x of t, sorry, capital X of t, capital Y of t, dt, because we're going to take an expectation. So this would turn out to be limit t tends to infinity. 1 by 2t mm -hmm. integral minus <clears throat> t to t rxy of t comma t dt. Now there's not going to be any change in the times because it, one belongs to x of t and the other one belongs to y of t. And the same thing when we write it in the frequency domain by applying the Parseval's theorem of the Fourier transform, this is going to be 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity expectation of x t star of omega times y t of omega by 2 times t d omega and uh, limit t tends to infinity is what I have forgotten to apply here. I will write it down. So limit t tends to infinity. The same thing has to apply here. Let me change a bit for us to get the cross power formula and cross correlation formula. So I'll be changing uh, it a bit because this will be 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity limit t tends to infinity expectation of x t star of omega y t of omega right by 2 t d omega the expression that we have got here limit t tends to infinity expectation of the random process x of omega the conjugate of the random process x of omega to y of omega by 2 t is nothing but our cross power density spectrum. That is the expression for our cross power density spectrum. So let us write it uh, clearly. S x y of omega is limit t tends to infinity expectation of x t star of omega with y t of omega by 2 times t by 2 times t. Right. This is what uh, we have. Right. This is the cross power density. And if you want the cross power, as mentioned earlier, if you want the cross power in terms of power density spectrum, we have Pxy as 1 by 2 pi times when you integrate the cross power density between minus infinity to infinity. This is the formula for the cross power and this is the cross power density spectrum. Okay, for cross power density to be very funny. It is cross power density. 
right? So these are the expressions that we have got. And if at all you want, we have two types of, uh, like we have Rxy and Ryx. Likewise, we have Sxy and Syx. So let us quickly write down the expression for Syx of omega. We can also repeat the same procedure and the same procedure has to be iterated and we'd be taking PYX of T in place of PXY of T. By iterating, we can directly write SYX of omega as limit P tends to infinity exponential of XT star of omega times XT of omega by QT. Very simple. And P by X is going to be 1 by 2 pi times integral minus infinity to infinity S by X of omega d omega. The power that you get is also going to be a conjugate. And if you want the total cross power, okay, the total cross power can be given as the total cross power is given as Pxy plus Pyx. Okay, this is about the over, this is about the cross powers that we are generating. I mean, the, the sum of Pxy and Pyx goes above the individual cross powers, obviously. Right, and we are considering we are ensuring that they are not orthogonal. I hope you understand what orthogonality means. The x and y are not orthogonal to each other. And quickly going through the properties of uh, cross power density spectrum. And then we can go forward and find the relation between cross power density as well as cross correlation. You can write it as spectrum because when you plot it, what you're going to get is the spectral characteristics. We can actually do one problem in order to understand how the power density spectrum is going to be. We can work it out as soon as we are done with the properties. Right? The first property is very similar to what we have seen for the power density spectrum. But because we have two random processes, uh, we're going to see the relation between Sxy and Syx. So, when you talk about S, X, Y of omega, it is going to be S, Y, X of minus omega. S, Y, X of minus omega or you can write it as S, Y, X star of omega. This is the first property. We do not need proofs for this. You can understand the power density concepts from the Fourier series that we have done, okay? Fourier series or Fourier transforms that we have done in signals and systems. So that should be good enough. So here real value of Sxy of omega and real value of S, Y, X of omega are even functions, are even functions of omega. We're going to see a few problems which should prove uh, that uh, these are the real values. Okay, the third one is imaginary values. Obviously, when you are talking about real values, we need to talk about imaginary values of x of omega are odd functions odd functions of 
omega. Okay, these are the first three properties. Now, we have earlier whatever um, properties of cross, uh, whatever expressions for cross power density spectrum that we have developed are based on we considering that x of t and y of t are not orthogonal to each other. So what happens if x of t and y of t are orthogonal to each other? Then the, the cross power density is going to be zero in either cases. In either cases, if x of t and y of t are orthogonal to each other. We know very well that uh, the product of uh, uh, the two random variables and integrated over one um, particular interval is going to be zero. We have seen the same during the autocorrelation and we have seen that covariance Variance of two random functions, two random processes is going to be zero if x and t or x of t and y of t are orthogonal and hence its Fourier transform pair, right? Property number five goes the way. And by of t r uncorrelated okay and also have constant mean values constant mean values then Cross power densities will be equal leading to 2 pi because it's constant will have 2 pi del of omega. Right? We can see the proof for this one. And the next one that we have seen and proved earlier, the time average of the cross correlation function is Fourier transform. When you Fourier transform it, you're going to get cross power density spectrum. Likewise, when you do the Fourier transform of R by X of T comma T plus tau, what you're going to get is S by X of omega. These are the Fourier transform pair. And SXY and RXY, RYX are indeed Fourier transform pairs, which we are going to prove. Now, if X of T and Y of T are jointly wide sense stationary, are wide sense stationary and jointly wide sense stationary, then what happens is RXY of now we will have the Fourier transform, the cross correlation, and right, these are the basic uh, relation between autocorrelation and cross power density spectrum. So, as mentioned earlier, let us see how the spectrum is going to be whenever we try to find out the relation between autocorrelation and cross-correlation. Now, the problem that we want to talk about is a very simple one. autocorrelation function of a wide sense stationary process is 
we give an as rx x of tau. The minute we say rx x of tau, it is what we call that. It is a white sand stationary process. Even if you see white sand stationarity or, or not, it shouldn't really matter because rx x of tau clearly indicates that the process is white sand stationary. And here we need to about the constants a naught, omega naught are constants. Okay. Now, what we are what we are to do is find out the find the power density spectrum. With illustrations, so we're going to see how important it is for us to go into the frequency domain and then fetching the details of the autocorrelation function in the time domain, right? We're going to see how it happens. So now, because we have a wide sand stationary process, we can clearly say that our xx of tau and sxx of omega are Fourier transform pairs, and we simply need to do the Fourier transform for a naught square cos omega naught tau. So if you are so if you're very well aware of uh, the Fourier transform for cos omega naught tau, you can directly write it down. But the, it would uh, it is always suggestible that you analyze it completely and then put it down. Cos omega naught tau in terms of exponentials, j omega naught tau plus e bar minus j omega naught tau by two. So what we are going to get is we need to find the Fourier transform for e bar j omega tau. So from the from basically the frequency shifting property or frequency modulation property of Fourier transform, it is evident that The Fourier transform of 1 is 2 pi del of omega and the Fourier transform of, sorry, the inverse Fourier transform to be very precise of 2 pi del of omega minus omega naught is e bar j omega naught tau. Likewise, if you want the Fourier transform for 2 pi del of omega plus omega naught, it would be e bar minus j omega naught tau. This is according to the frequency modulation property of Fourier transform and I am sure you guys are very well aware of it. So this will be Fourier transform of e bar plus j omega naught tau is going to be 2 pi del of omega minus omega naught and this is going to be 2 pi minus or plus I think I can Right it over here right, rather than doing two different expressions. So I'm going to put the same here and then find out the power density and then illustrate it. So SXX of omega is what we have is a naught square pi 4 times 2 pi del of omega plus omega naught plus del of omega minus omega naught. Right, so the, what we are going to get is pi a naught square by 2 times del of omega plus omega naught plus del of omega minus omega naught. Right, this is what we'd be getting. And if we have to illustrate it in the time domain, the signal that we have is Rxx of tau. So let this be tau. It is cos omega naught tau. So when we construct cos omega naught tau, the maximum value that we'd be getting is A naught square by 2. This is Rxx of tau 
which is given as a naught square by two cos omega naught tau. The zero cross rays are basically at pi by, as you clearly see, this is going to be pi by two times omega naught. And this is obviously going to be minus pi by two times omega naught. Okay, now the Fourier transform for this that we have got, this is omega domain and this is the power spectral density as excess of omega. What we have got is at minus omega naught and plus omega naught, we have impulses of strength. And to see a sink between the lines, this is going to be a naught square pi a naught square pi 2, right? This is the plotting of the time domain signal as well as the frequency domain signal, which is the power spectrum density as well as the autocorrelation function specifically for a white sense stationary random process x of t. All right, this is how we do the problems. If at all we have, these are pretty straightforward and easy to work it out. Ensure that you are drawing the spectrum as well as the time domain signal clearly. We will continue with the relation between cross power density spectrum and cross correlation in the next lecture.